Perfect. So welcome, welcome, welcome. It is day two of Eero Python. I hope everyone is keeping fine. I hope everyone is having loads of fun so far. Um, I have here with me already Peter Chu, our first speaker for today. Hello, Peter. Hi, hello, Sarah. Hello, everyone. Uh, so Peter is doing from Taiwan, right? Yeah, that's true. And it's two in the, it's two in the afternoon there. It's 7 a.m. for me. Um, but let's do this. Let's kick this off. Perfect. So Peter is going to talk to us today about Speak Python with Devices, how Python can be used in IoT infrastructure automation desks. So it's your turn now. Take it away, Peter. Thank you, much, sure. And uh, hello, uh, everyone. Hello, Europe. And I'm Peter. Thank you for joining me in this session. And uh, let me first introduce myself. I'm a software engineer in Taiwan and uh, love Python like all you guys. Besides that, I am a conference scholar. I like to uh, share my soul while I learn, and more importantly, the more for others after the conference. And uh, in fact, uh, I have hosted some open source conference in Taiwan. And uh, uh, in fact, we have uh, a conference next week, uh, two days, 14 tracks, and 1,000 people in person. And uh, I would like to invite you to come, but you know, due to the pandemic, so next time maybe. And in law, I can actually you person today. I'm glad we can see you hang out in this way. So now it's your turn. Why are you interested in this session? Apparently, I can actually with you one more at this time. But I guess most of you are working on data analysis, machine learning, and web development, things like that. These are the most common ways people use Python. But you know that Python is a very powerful and useful language, which can be used in a variety of tasks, not just those I mentioned. So if you wish to acquire something new into your Python skill set, you are in the right talk. We will see how to use the power of Python to build some amazing things from a tiny IoT device to a large scale platform system. This is why exactly we will talk about today. Since this talk is for beginners, we will start with some fundamental concepts of the operating system. On the other hand, if you are already an expert in this area, I'm sorry, but you may <laughs> sorry, feel disappointed. Let's begin. In this background, the light grandpa uh, stands for the OS, and the dark grandpa means physical hardware devices. There are two layers in the OS, user space and kernel space, respectively. Your Python program lives in user space. On the other hand, device drivers are living in kernel space. We know that Alex kernel is flying in C language. So notice that if the device you concern does not, does not have a corresponding driver, sorry, but as a Python year, we can do nothing at all. So in the following slides, let's ensure the driver is ready. Furthermore, the OS will represent our devices as some spatial files in the file system. You can see that in the uh, slide screenshot. Roughly speaking, those files are located in the uh, dev directory in Linux. So you may have been heard that in Unix, everything is a file. That's also true for devices. I emphasize this here because it means that we can manipulate a device like a file. And the great thing is, you are doing how to manipulate a file. Let's see an example. And if you run a snippet here in a risk to verify, you can make an onboard LED blink. You can see the demonstration on my camera. I take it. You can see uh, here something uh, blinking. And uh, yeah, a blinking light bulb is boring, you might think. It's true, but the interesting thing is the code here just open a device file, write something, then the behavior of the device is changed like magic. Do you know, do you think it's trivial? Yeah, it is. But last not the full story. There are one more operation for you people to know. And uh, it's our leading actor today, ILCTL. ILCTL means input output control. 
As this name suggested, the purpose of it is to control devices. We don't need it in the uh, LED example since it's the simplest one. We can manipulate it with merely reading and writing. But for many devices, that's not enough. An example is a model. The natural things to do with it, receive data by reading and send data by writing. But how can we say and get complete of it? Be ready for example. This is what and where IOCTL plays for. This is what exactly it looks like. It has three parameters, uh, five scripter requests and arguments. Notice how the request is constructed with formal parameters. Here are some more details, but I don't want to go through with them. Instead, an analogy may be more helpful. No matter what you work for, you should be all comfortable with RESTful API, right? I found that we can have a mapping between a RESTful API request and parameters of IOCT error. Uh, for example, as you have known, a RESTful API, always say an uh, HTTP request, has two paths, the header and the body. Then we can say IOCT error also has header and the body. The second parameters of IOCTL, the request, is the header. The third parameters of it, the arguments, is the body. From this mapping, I expect you can uh, understand all parameters of IOCTL without I say any more. So you can read it a few seconds. Yeah, got it. So indeed, many people feel struggle to understand our CTL for the very first time. So as me, so as I. But after studying, I found out LCTL is just like uh, HTTP, a common interface to interact with a resource, but the uh, resource is a hardware device at this time. Now we know IOCTL, but hey, we are Pythonista. How can we use it in Python? And let's get it started for a mini example. In this example, we use IOCTL to get device names. Two buttons, keyboard, mouse, and some virtual bus related devices. That's why I have on my computer. To achieve it in Python, there are three common criteria we have to meet. The first is to create an IOCT request if you forget what it is. A request let the driver know what do you want to do, like a, uh, act like a RESTful API header. The second is, since we communicate with drivers and drivers are running C, we have to convert the data types between C and Python. And lastly, we have to manage to access IOCT error in the Python environment. Then we can call it. There are many ways to meet this criteria, and uh, we will see two approaches lead to that. The first approach, we write a C extension module. We have to write some C codes in this approach, and it's only work on C Python. On the other hand, the second is a pure Python approach. I will explain both of them step by step. And let's start on the first one. Firstly, we define the IOCTL function, the thing you intend to do. Here we define a function called uh, get device name. It has three arguments. The first is a device file path. The second answer is an address of a piece of memory and size. We can get resolve on it after we call this function. I think the call is well self-explained instead of the 18th slide. Let's have a look at it. We create an IOCTL request at this line. We can see I use uh, a micro name EVIOCG name here. In general, device drivers will provide help micros like this, so you can use them easier. And um, another thing is remember an IOCTL request is constructed with four parameters. So if you expand the micro here, you can see it exactly take four parameters as shown in the line 17. 
after the like, OCTO function is defined, let's implement a wrap function out of it. This function consumes a device file path and returns a corresponding device name. This function is what we actually access in our Python code. So you can see we have a Python style function name and uh, arguments and return values are proved by pi, pi, pi address. Pi address is one of the most common uh, address structure provided by C Python. And most efforts to implement it are converting the data types between C and Python. You can see I use some Pi prefix macros to do it. These macros are also provided by C Python. And this is a trivial case. Since the arguments and return types are just string, it can be a, a state struct or Python dictionary in some more uh, complex uh, example. Okay, last, uh, in the last step, the last step is to do some packaging works. In this approach, we are, what we actually get is a uh, Python module. So to build this module, we have to provide some necessary information, such as module name, a list of functions available in this module, things like that. Just follow the uh, C Python spec here. Uh, so now our module is ready. We can install it, then import it, and, and then call it in the usual Python way, as shown in the screenshot. We get a device then uh, called uh, virus first. Okay, now let's turn to a second approach. In this approach, we do similar things like the first one. So this time, we don't have to write any C code. Again, let's start by creating the IOCTL request. We use a micro to do it in the last time. But how can we access macros in Python at this time? No, we can. We have to uh, port necessary micros to Python. And fortunately, common macros for creating IOCTL requests has been promoted by some good guys. So we just need to uh, port driver specific macros. And it's usually not a big deal, just a few lines. Again, we have to come with a data type. And it's still trivial here since we just encode and decode by code right here. Notice that we use a viewing module called FCNTL here. It provides ready to use IOCTL function, so we don't have to write any C code at this time. Finally, we get the same results we saw before. Now, you might be remembering in your mind, but math theories, please give me something in practical. Okay, so. Let me find a convincing example for you. A couple feeder might be uh, sounds interesting. Just attach a sensor onto a Raspberry Pi, then get a sensor status by what we, by what we learned today. And then uh, when a car is approaching, open again, what's the try? Yeah, but I want to, that's, that's interesting, but I want to show you something more in, impressive. Like this one, do you know what it is? It's a very unique massive storage system used in nuclear experiments. Unlike the just storage media we use, this system is based on magnetic caps, dozens of caps inside of it. They use this system to store data of how our universe works. You can see what's inside of it in the video uh, in the right button. There are many kinds of devices, robot arms, Backup readers, tape drives, things like that. All these devices need to be controlled and coordinated by some system. So this gives us a great idea to show what we can do from what we learned today. So in the following slides, last image, we, we build such kinds of system with Python. Let's begin. We will use the tape simulator today, so you can make it at home. You can see my virtual uh, drives and their device file paths in the screenshot. We will use them later. And we also need a driver. Linux already has one, so no worry about it. Now, let's see how to use the tape storage. 
write data and take part each, we need to find it and load it. And then we write our forward it to a correct position. And then we can start to write. For proof of concept, uh, we will see how to implement rewind and get status today. First, let's see how to get tape status. We have already seen how to manipulate a device with IOCTL and Python, but it's a little bit more complex this time. In the previous case, we just ask string and the device name. And this time we get tape status in a C struct. Notice how we convert C struct into a Python dictionary in the snippet. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, in the previous one, we used C extension, and uh, now let's try a pure Python approach. We can see how to use the struct module here to encode the arguments and decode return values in this code snippet. And here is the last uh, code snippet. And besides the approach we covered today, the C types module is also very useful. C types is a point of function library for Python. It provides the compatible data type and only encode C functions like IOCTL. We can see how we use it to implement the Y function in this code snippet. And you can run code snippet and get a result like this. You can see how we fetch and change the tape position. It's the, uh, it's the first step to build a mass tape storage we just saw. Okay, that's it. Summary. The purpose of this talk is to let you know we can use Python to build some amazing things for a car to be there to a massive storage system. You just need to know how the computer works and how to manipulate a device in Python, then you can make it. Thank you. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Wonderful. Uh, you, uh, we took a little bit less time, so let's go, let's see who has questions. Um, so far, we didn't have any questions in this course, and I don't think we have any questions on yeah on Zoom, not yet. Okay, that's also a great thing. <laughs> I think it's a bit early for everyone. Uh, no, we're having we're having someone is typing a question, I believe. So Annika is saying yeah, it's applauding as well. Uh, perfect. So our first question. So do you know any robotic kits that would be great to experiment with? Uh, you said uh, the, 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 the storage system I, I just saw. Uh, we just, I just saw. Okay. And do you have any other suggestions as well? Or like that's your favorite? Uh, uh, sorry, can, can you say that again? Is that is the, the one you just showed, is that your favorite or do you have other suggestions as well? Oh no, I just have, uh, uh, I just, uh, uh, in the past few years, I tried to uh, work on some project just like the system I, I showed you. So I think it as simple, yeah. Okay, so why are we getting, we're waiting for questions. Uh, yeah, tell me more about your participation in PyCon Taiwan. How long have you been have you been part of the community? Uh, yeah, I I I I love Python Taiwan. In fact, I like all PyCons in the you know in the past few years. I have uh, attending PyCon Hong Kong and PyCon Japan, and uh, yeah, I, I think the PyCon community have a, you know a big connections in international connections. So uh, I enjoy yeah. Oh, PyCon's not just Taiwan. Okay, there is a, yeah, the PyCon, the next PyCon Japan is coming up soon, right? The, the CFP just closed. And yeah, that's true. Yeah, we we're quite excited. Did you just submit anything to it? Yeah, but uh, you know, the pandemic, so maybe we can just 
virtually traveling around the world this year. Yes, I think that's going to be the case. But well, it's okay. Uh, any more questions? Anyone has any other questions for uh, Peter here? I see people typing, but I don't see, I don't see their actual output. <laughs> well, it's maybe just cast type. <laughs> typing other people. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Mm. No, I don't think we have anything else right now. Okay, that's well, fine. if you have any more questions for Peter, please just uh, type your questions on Speak Python with Devices. There is a, a room for that under the knee breakouts. So, well, Peter, thank you very, very much. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you. And I will be there waiting for your more questions. You can have a coffee and uh, think about us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was an absolute pleasure. <laughs>